A lot of you have heard of the term heat lightning. I know I remember when I was younger, I heard the term heat lightning. What about you, Marlena? You ever I've heard of it? I've never heard of you. No, I haven't. Yes, uh, heat lightning is more in the summertime, especially here in the South. Heat lightning, there's not much difference between heat lightning and real lightning. The difference is you don't hear the thunder. Typically, you need to be about 15, 20 miles away to hear thunder. Heat lightning can be seen up to 100 miles away. So generally, in the summer, the conditions are right. Of course, you got summer nighttime thunderstorms out there. In time time, these storms get to 40, 50,000 feet. So you're actually seeing lightning that's being reflected off clouds that can be up to 100 miles away. Yes, that's pretty neat. And you won't, of course, hear the thunder because the way sound travels in the troposphere and the stratosphere on Earth. So, like I say, you need about 15, 20 miles away, and that's the reason why you don't hear any thunder, but you do see the distant flashes or not so distant flashes of lightning at nighttime. Quick look at the storm setup. Quickly gonna explain on what happened, what we call an MCS. Talked about that last week, Friday, multiple convective system. First, they start out with just one strong thunderstorm all by itself. A strong, of course, thunderstorm updraft gets started. Remember, I said these storms started in middle Tennessee and worked itself all the way down. On the back side of these thunderstorms, of course, they get higher winds and stuff that work themselves into the storms. And what happens, you hear us talk about a gust front, and what you're seeing is actually uh, those are the, the shelf clouds or the clouds that are arcing right outside. The clouds, you see the shelf, it looks like a shelf gust front, and that's due to the drier and cooler air that is being punched from upper levels into the back side of the thunderstorm. Of course, that air sinks, and when that air sinks, it makes a front, and this front is, then helps to generate new storms, and as this system, just like yesterday, drops south, take just like a shovel, when you go across the earth with a shovel, take the back side of it and go across the earth, and it continues to push soil up, and that's exactly how this thunderstorm system acted yesterday. A lot of cold air toward the ground went down. Of course, cold air sinks and it pushed up the warmer air and hot air. We get just a little bit enough of shear and then we end up with a squall line of thunderstorms like we saw yesterday. Like I said, that's called the MCS. And of course, the models have a hard time predicting that, but that's the type of storm setup that we saw yesterday. And that comes out of Northwest flow pattern. We won't have to worry about any of that anytime soon in the forecast, but just wanted to explain the breakdown of what a multiple convective storm system is. I'll be back with your WLTZ First News Today.